Hey folks, Cooley again, got another one of your emails about high-tech cars and modern driving. This one comes in from KC in Cincinnati. He says, well, I had too much internet again, and I wound up looking at electric conversion kits, specifically by EV West for a Factory 5 818. The 818 is a very hot, sort of a Lotus Evora-like kit car from a company called Factory 5. EV conversion kits, he goes on, have been around for a long time, and for the most part, they've been underwhelming. But EVs have come a long way, so I thought maybe these kits have as well. Well, KC, let's take a look at the prospects here. I should tell you first off, I've never built a kit car, so I don't know that process, let alone what it's like from Factory 5, but their stuff looks good. I have rebuilt a lot of cars from the ground up that were production cars, so I do know the pain you can run into, but let's break it down into what I see are five chapters. First of all, you got to get your car, your chassis, your rolling stock, if you will. You've identified that already. A new Factory 5 818. The nice thing about that car is it's already got an electric power plant from another maker that's ready for it. We'll get to that in a minute. About 10 grand will get you into a basic 818 kit. Now that's going to be a cabrio, not a coupe. A roller bear of powertrain. That's where we go now to EV West, as you mentioned, and you pick up their kit, which is made for that car. I like the fact that those two companies have a little symbiosis. To what degree they've co-planned this, I don't know, but clearly there's something done here for you. I like that a lot. The motor kit that EV West recommends for a great 818 build is actually an ex-Tesla Model S motor kit. Runs about 12 grand, but that includes a lot of ancillary components you'll need for the integration. What's not included are the batteries, and for that, EV West recommends a set of five ex-Tesla Model S packs at a total of about $7,900. That'll give you around 26 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. This is how you measure essentially the size of the tank, if you will, in an electric car. Now, that's a relatively small amount of capacity by today's standards. A modern Nissan Leaf has between 40 and 60 kilowatt hours. However, you're looking to build a car that should come in weighing about half of what a Nissan LEAF does. So I think 26 kilowatt hours of capacity is going to work out rather well for both range and performance. So now we're at around 30 grand before we allocate another 3,000 or so for parts like seats and wheels and tires. And yeah, I'm going cheap with that number. We're already pushing 33 grand. And then a whole lot of work on your part. However, I think all that work is gonna go better for you today than it would have a few years ago, let alone decades ago, trying to convert a car from one gas engine to another, or even converting from gas to electric. Because you're starting with a clean sheet vehicle, and I think these kits look pretty well thought out, both the car and the electric power plant. It's nice to have a lot of that work done for you. We've been changing engines and vehicles forever, but when you gotta sit out there under a shade tree scratching your head, weekend after weekend, it tends to spiral into a hole of a ton of time wasted and a ton of money wasted on parts and solutions that didn't work the first time. Once you've got it done, two more chapters of fun await you, specifically in your state in Ohio. You've got to get approval for this thing to be on the road. You've got to go get a safety inspection. There won't be any emissions to pass, obviously, so that's good. And there's no particular thing you've got to do to get them to be okay with the fact that you built this car. Self-assembled cars are recognized under the Ohio BMV. But you do have to make sure it's got all the safety parts and systems that are needed. I believe the Factory 5 is going to have that nailed for you. So that should be pretty straightforward. Now, one interesting wrinkle here for those who build their own car, certainly for you in Ohio, is because the VIN of your Factory 5 818, when you're done, is not going to indicate its power plant because Factory 5 didn't know what that's going to be. They don't build a complete car. You're going to have to take your completed vehicle to a registrar, as I understand it, and get them to certify and enter in the database of what kind of power plant it has. I don't expect that's going to be a big hassle, again, because Ohio recognizes self-assembled cars and because states like the fact that you're bringing a no emissions car to the market. If you were doing something changing the emissions profile, that might be a different can of worms. And then you're going to have to pay some additional taxes, both the first time you register and every year after that. Ohio's new law, as you probably know, requires a $200 surcharge, if you will, on electric cars. Pure electrics, $100 on plug-in electrics. Why? Because EVs don't pay gas tax or they pay less of a gas tax. And as a result, a lot of states are waking up to the idea that, wait a minute, these cars are starting to draw out payers from the road tax accounts. 
How are we going to maintain our infrastructure? So you're going to get stung with that. But I don't believe you're buying this to somehow get a cheap EV. I think you want to build a really cool electric sports car, enjoy doing it yourself, and get a good value in the end. And I think all that is true. On the downside, this won't be like assembling Legos. The headaches are yours. There's no dealer, and independent shops will view these like classic cars. Someone else's project, which means time-consuming, often low-priority work. And expect rather dismal resale value. EV tech will be much better and cheaper in a few years. As has always been the case, nobody else wants your resto mod, unless it has Shelby in the name. You'll end up with something of a 21st century Bradley GT. But in a market with 260 million passenger cars on the road, there is definitely a niche for EV conversions. We've been intrigued by conversion crate motors from electric GT that look like regular engines. Great for the vintage electro motor, but on a large budget. Volkswagen is offering a limited factory run of electrofitted versions of classic Beetles, and Jaguar, as you've probably seen in some Royal photos, has done the same thing with the E-Type. But those are cult cars where you can get some critical mass. By several estimates, we're just a few years away from the point when new EVs will actually be cheaper to buy and operate than a comparable gas engine car, largely based on battery cost declines. You just won't need to brew your own electric unless you really want to. So bottom line, this whole process is quite visibly doable, and I think it sounds pretty exciting, to be honest, and I think it's going to result in a cool car for a great price. That said, I don't think this scales. This isn't how we're going to turn over the U.S. fleet into a world of electric cars. This isn't for most people, by far. However, it does point the map, I think, to a more satisfying conversion and DIY build than we've ever had before in automotive history. That's because electric cars are simpler and they generally give better results on the road than combustion cars and all the huge number of variables they have to achieve a satisfying drive. Keep those emails coming. I'm here to answer your questions about high-tech cars and modern driving. It's Cooley at theroadshow.com.